Hey, what's up Photography Mafia? In this Darktable tutorial, we're going to take a look at the RGB Levels tool and see how it works or see how it can help you improve your photos. So let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is open up the RGB Levels module. And now I have it open here. So what's happening in the RGB Levels module or the RGB Levels tool? So in order to better understand it, we need to take a look at this histogram here. So the RGB levels tool helps map the black point and the white point of an image. So the best way to give you an example is if we look at this histogram here of this photo, you can see the highlights or the whites. It's not at its whitest point. In other words, it's not evenly exposed and maybe even the shadows or the black point right here. So if I click on the logarithmic scale of the histogram, you can see it's not balanced here. It's about missing about, let's say, 20 or 10% of the luminance value. In other words, it goes to about 80 or 90%. And actually, if we look at the blacks, it looks like the blacks are okay here. It does look like a little bit of the reds is overblown, but that's fine. But mainly it's the highlights that are underexposed here. So I'm just going to go back to the linear histogram and the way the levels tool works is it's similar to the histogram so the histogram goes from shadows to highlights same thing with the levels tool here it goes from shadows to highlights and the middle is the midtones so what I'm going to do is I'm going to map in or change the input level right here of the white point and watch as I change the input level this will start pushing to the right so I'm just going to click, hold and drag this to the left. And as you can see, the histogram is moving to the right. And now this image looks a little bit more evenly exposed. So let me just move it to the left, the levels tool and makes the histogram or the white point map to the right side here. And as I change that, it looks like the blacks we're also shifted to the right. So I can start moving the black point here and then just shifting this levels tool to the right. And this makes the black point go to the left. So if we take a look at the before and after of the image, you can see it's better exposed just by using the RGB levels tool. Keep in mind, this image does need a little bit more work, maybe a little bit of a crop maybe correct some of the contrast or the saturation, but we're just working with the RGB levels tool and seeing how it works or helps us improve an image. So that's that. So we were able to correct the black point and the white point by using the RGB levels tool. And this middle section here, it helps us change or map the midpoint. So if I map this midpoint to the left, it makes more of the midtones white. It maps it to white. And if I move this to the right, the midpoint of the levels tool, it maps more of the image or the midtones to the black point. So what I'm going to do now is just reset this. And now there's a few different options here as well. There's these picker tools. So if I click on this picker tool here, you can see this icon and I need to map this to the black point to change it. As you can see, this image is very limited in color and grayscale information. So it automatically selects the main black point or the main white point here, or if I select here, so it's not very good to use. Same thing with the white point tool or the white point picker. If I move it here, it messes it up. And I don't think it's very necessary to use these tools. It's better just to map it and eyeball it with your eyes. And then there's the midtone tool right here. And sometimes these tools can be finicky. So I'm just going to reset that. Then there's also this auto tool right here. And that just subtly changed this levels tool. So let me reset that here. And then there's this tool, which I believe is pretty good. It helps you expose an image better depending on which section of the image you want exposed. So for example, I don't really care too much about this part of the sky. I want to focus in on this middle part of the image. So I can click on this and then I can draw this rectangle or square and then the auto picker or the auto levels tool will automatically adjust the exposure for this. 
as you can see it's not always perfect looking at this histogram here so we do need to still move this to the left and i'm just going to reset this here now and we do have some different rgb channels we can work with so this is the composite channel that i've been showing you but i can change this and then i can go to a different channel which is the rgb independent channels so this is r for red this is for green and this is for blue so since this image isn't very well color graded or saturated i can put in a little bit of cyan to this image if i want i can move this to the right and this may be a little bit confusing because we're looking at the red channel but remember how the rgb composite channel it goes from shadows to highlights well, the red channel, it goes from cyan to red. So if I move this in, you'll see more red. Let me just reset that. And let me go back to the independent channels. And the same thing with the green. The greens go from magenta to green. And the blue channel goes from yellow to blue. So this is mapping in yellow into the shadows. And this is mapping in blue into the highlights or to the white point. The other thing I do need to mention about the RGB channel is it doesn't have an output selector. So when we're moving these sliders at the bottom, that's changing the input or mapping the input. But usually other photography software, we can usually change the output at the top here, which doesn't look like we can here. So we cannot change the output right here and here and here, but that's fine. There's different ways of correcting exposure. You can do it in the tone contrast tool or tone contrast module. So let me just reset this. And then here we have different preserved color presets or settings. So this is preserving the luminance value. And this is just how the dark table calculates the output when you're changing the input of these values. So you can usually play around with it, but I think luminance is fine in this case. Oftentimes average RGB is good, especially with the tone curve, but uh, there's a lot of like mathematical or technical information of how these work, but usually sticking with the luminance or average RGB is good enough. Let me just take a look here and let me just Correct this exposure a little bit better like that. And if I go to luminance, let's take a look at it. And then if I go to average RGB, it doesn't look like there was much of a change. Yeah, so it's a very subtle change. You may not even be able to see it on your screen. The change will probably be more noticeable on the independent channels, but it doesn't look like they allow you to change or average out how the RGB channels are outputted. Anyways, that's how the RGB levels works. If you guys enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.